Hey everybody, welcome to Focus Garage. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to go from the stock Grand Sport Z06 lip to a Z01 replica style lip. Now, the one that I chose is through EOS, which is known as Extreme Online Solutions. And I wanna let you know that I chose that one because it is made of an ABS plastic. It's not fiberglass, it's not carbon fiber. So when this lip does inevitably get kind of a beat up, this lip should kind of hold up a little bit better than something that's like fiberglass and it's gonna crack. So as you can see, I already went ahead and I removed the factory lip here. It's just held on by eight millimeter fasteners all the way across the lip here. You can kind of see the holes with that there. And they do line up to the holes on the aftermarket lip, which is pretty cool. So this lip is gonna utilize the factory holes as well as a couple of self-tapping holes. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do first is apply some double-sided tape as per the instructions so that way we get the absolute best hold with this. There's gonna be a little bit of double-sided tape that holds it in place, as well as the factory screws and the self-tapping screws because I don't want this falling off of my car. Right now, we are lipless because I've already removed the factory lip. Um, I do recommend lifting at least the front end of your car for this, so we've got the front end kind of jacked up here. So we're gonna go ahead and put the double-sided tape on this and get this lined up. As far as the lip goes, here's the instructions and what we're dealing with. You can see just kind of like what I was saying, you've got, correction, seven millimeter, not eight millimeter. So you've got the seven millimeter bolts holding on the stock lip. Go ahead and remove those. Then clean it thoroughly with a degreaser. Do not use anything waxy or anything like that if you're gonna be using an adhesive like double-sided tape. So clean it with an all-purpose cleaner, or even better yet, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Then go ahead and apply the double-sided tape. So you can see in the instructions here, we've kind of got it along the inner edges of the bolt holes. Here's what I've gone ahead and done. So you can see I've mirrored that pretty perfectly there. We've got it along the inner edges of the bolt hole. So when this is up on the car, this will stick it to the bumper, the bolts will hold it in place, and it'll be good to roll. So what I'm going to do now is kind of fumble with this with the help of some jack stands to kind of get this into place. So I'm only one person. Uh, two people would be highly recommended for an installation like this to kind of hold up one side as you put on the other but I'm gonna go ahead and get this into place with myself and the jack stands, making sure that I have a little bit of the tape revealed on each one, so that way once I've got it up on the car, I can go ahead and pull the uh, tape off without it sticking completely by itself to the car. So if you get each piece started with a little tab hanging out, you'll be able to peel it the rest of the way off once you've got it on the car. That's a little trick there whenever you're applying anything on a vehicle with double-sided tape. Since this is a lip, uh, I do recommend using something like 3M that's gonna be very, very adhesive, or I even recommend looking into something like an adhesive promoter that 3M sells for their double-sided tape. But here's what we've got. I'm gonna go ahead and mock it up into place now. See how sturdy it feels with just the factory bolts? And then if we need to install the self-tappers, we can go ahead and do that. I think between the tape and the factory bolts, I'm not sure if I'm gonna need any kind of self-tapping screws. But we'll get it up there into place and we'll see and we'll go from there. Since that's only me, I kind of wanted to show you what I'm doing here. I've got two jack stands supporting the lip that I'm going to use to kind of help me hold it in place while I lightly tighten some screws. And then we'll go ahead, get the tape down, get everything else done, get the self-tappers in. So we've got a jack stand here, jack stand over there to kind of act as an extra set of hands for me while I lower this into place on the car. Now I've already cleaned underneath thoroughly. I've got the tape started off, as you can see there, with the little ribbons falling off, so that way we can peel that once we've got it stuck to the car. And that's it. So we're gonna go ahead and painstakingly try and install this to the car. We'll check back with either uh, success or failure here. So that's it. One thing I was skeptical of when I was seeing reviews of the lip was how well it fit to the car or not. And this one supposedly fit really well, and it does. So here's the edge of the bumper. There's where the lip ends. I mean, it's, it's pretty close, I'd say. You've got right there, right there. There you've got kind of that more protruded look as it comes out the front of the car. And then here's where it ends on this side. So I'd say that's pretty close. You can see how far the lip pops out now and it fit really, really well. Like I showed you in the other clip, I put a lot of double-sided tape on it for where it meets the body. So that way it's not gonna be coming off or anything like that. It's very, very stable to the car. And overall, I love what it has done to the front of the vehicle. We'll go ahead and pull it out of the garage in a minute or two here and just show you kind of what it looks like with the car on the ground and everything like that. But overall, for what I paid for it, I'm extremely pleased and I think it adds a lot of aggression to the front of the car. I wanted to take the car outside into like a scenic parking lot or a forest reserve or something like that to kind of wrap up this installation of the front lip. But wouldn't you know it, it's cold, snowy, and rainy outside, so that's not gonna happen right now. Not a huge deal. 
Some final takeaways on the lip. As you may have seen in the final clip there, I was realizing when I was editing it that you can tell that the lip is not flush with the bumper. That's of no fault to the lip whatsoever. Uh, it's not fully installed or tightened down by me. I went and I addressed that afterwards there. And then my car is actually missing one of the little metal screw retainers in the center of the lip there. I went ahead and I fixed that after the video. I had to wait for that part to come in. So there may have been a little bit of sag where the center of the lip meets the bumper there. That's been remedied and taken care of as well. I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a couple pictures right here in the end of this video, just so that way you can see what this lip looks like installed on the car. And would I recommend it? Yes, absolutely. I bought this lip through EOS, Extreme Online Solutions, directly through them. I know there's a bunch of people that sell lips just like this on eBay, on Amazon. Uh, there's a few other aftermarket companies that sell these lips. And I'm very, very pleased with what uh, this lip looks like, especially for what I paid for this lip. It came with hardware, uh, as far as like for the self-tapping screws go. It came with instructions. It was packaged very, very well in a cardboard box with protectors, so that way the box didn't get uh, crushed or anything like that. Um, but this is a lip that I'd recommend if you're looking to kind of take that step to something a little bit more aggressive. My factory lip was missing a couple pieces of hardware. It was pretty scraped up from just these cars being low in and out of driveways and parking and stuff like that. So I wanted to go ahead and replace it and upgrade it while I was doing that. Sure, I could have bought another one of those thinner lips, but with my car being lowered and already having the side skirts installed on it, I thought the ZR1 style front lip would really kind of tie the overall look of the car together. So now that I got the front lip and the side skirts on, I do want to get a rear spoiler for the car. I'll be looking for something painted to match, probably the ZR1 style or the extended ZR1 style spoiler there. But final takeaways of the lip. I would definitely recommend this. Uh, I got it in just kind of that matte semi-gloss finish. You can get it in glossy black, you can get it in carbon fiber, any of the above. I do like that it's ABS plastic and not fiberglass because these lips do take a beating and if they are fiberglass or carbon fiber, they're much more likely to crack. Whereas this ABS one is probably just going to get scratched and chipped up and it's not going to be as big as a deal. I like to look at these lips as a wearable item on the car because I do drive the car. I do plan to put some miles on it. So it'll be seeing the road. It's not going to be sitting in a garage all the time. So if something happens to the lip, something happens to the lip. It's nice to know that it fits well and it looks like an OEM piece. There's no huge gaps anywhere with it. Um, it lines up to the body well and it mounts in a way where it feels secure. I have seen people talk about running the uh, bumper reinforcement that kind of sits behind the grill there. We'll see if that ends up being an issue with my car. If it is, then we can go ahead and purchase that and uh, see if that's something that's really needed for the car. Go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments down below, what you think of this lip. Is it too aggressive for the car? Does it kind of tie the look of the car together? Do you hate it? Are you running one on your car? Definitely let me know. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you guys in the next video.